This is Frank Islam, Chairman and CEO of FY Investment Group and your host of Washington Current Review, where we interview leading voices from business and politics that impact you, the viewer. Today, we're fortunate enough to have our, a guest, which is going to tell you all about taxes, and his name is Mr. Manjeet Singh. Thank you very much for coming to our show. Thank you for inviting me, Mr. Islam. I appreciate that very much, uh, Mr. Singh. Tell us a little bit about your background, then we're going to get real nitty-gritty stuff about the tax. Uh, my background is I came in this area in 1979, went to school at University of District of Columbia to do my bachelor's in accounting. And thereafter, I did my master's at uh, GW in finance, MBA, and passed the CPA exam at the same time. Worked for a few organizations for about uh, till 1991. Mm -hmm. And in April 91, I started my own accounting practice and this is over 20, 30 year in uh, pr providing accounting, tax, and bookkeeping services to the Washington and uh, beyond areas. And what is the name of the company? Manjit Singh CPA PC. Okay, so maybe at the end of the show, we're gonna, uh, you can give them information if someone wants to get hold of you. Well, thank you very much for serving our community. We, it's very important that we need to know a lot about taxes. Now, after such a long time, the Congress Pass American Taxpayer Relief Act of 2012 that was signed by the President while he was en route to Hawaii, as I understand, <laughs> on January 2nd, 2013. Was it that? No, no, he was here, so I was wrong. Anyway, tell me a little bit about this. What's this all about and how it's going to affect the community? Uh, as you know, we, you have been in the Washington area as many number of years as I have been here, and you know the Washington is dysfunctional. Congress do, uh, is always a gridlock. Even That's an understatement about Congress being dysfunctional. <laughs> even though President Obama r ran on a platform of increasing the taxes for... The super rich. Super rich. And he was using the super rich as $250,000 or above. Right. right. Uh, he did win the election with 332 electoral votes and 51.06% of the popular vote. So I don't understand why the Congress would not agree to what he was proposing. Anyway, after a lot of uh, harsh trading, they were able to pass a tax law on January the 2nd, 2012, uh, sorry, 2013, in the beginning of the new year. And event evidently, the tax rates did go up slightly. Uh, Tax rate went up for the not for the middle class, the people who makes more than three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and the capital gain went up too. So tell us yes. a little bit about that. The in the negotiations, they were able to le increase the limit instead of taxes going up for people from two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand. It went up for people making four hundred thousand to four hundred fifty thousand. Single individuals four hundred thousand, married filing joint four hundred fifty thousand. So people making uh, up to $400,000, the tax brackets are the same, 10%, 20, uh, 15%, 25%, 28%, 33%, and the 35%, which was put in by President Clinton and President Bush. However, people who are going to have taxable income, more than $400,000, are going to see a 39.6% tax rate. That's about right. That's the ordinary income tax. What about the capital gain? Capital gain tax rates went up to the twenty percent. Go ahead. <laughs> Capital gains tax rate is also going to remain the same as it was for individuals in the previous tax brackets. People in the high tax bracket, thirty-nine point six, are going to see the twenty percent tax bracket. That's what I meant to ask. Yes. Okay. You just threw a curveball at me. Th that's okay. <laughs> I understand. So obviously, the, the bottom line is over here, the people who are making income of a gross income of $350,000, dollars they are not going to pay more tax. They're going to pay the same tax that they paid last, last time, correct? Correct. You brought a good point in there. You used the word gross, 350000 Right. I am talking about taxable uh, rate. Right. So people who are at three hundred fifty gross, taking the itemized deductions, taking the exemptions that are available, you are still under the $400,000. So you are, your tax brackets are the same. There have been no changes in there. So Mr. Singh, explain to our audience what is the capital gain taxes means? What does that mean? First of all, we need to define what a capital gains is. Right. 
Capital gain is any assets that any tangible asset, and it, include, is, it includes real estate, that you hold for investment purposes, and then you sell. The co selling price minus the cost price is the gain. If you have a gain and you have held it for more than 12 months, you're going to be taxed at the capital gains rate. For some tax brackets, the capital gains rate can be equal to zero. For a certain tax bracket, it is up to 10%. Then the next tax bracket is the 15%. So people who are making more than $400,000 as single and 450 as married filing joints, for them the ta capital gains bracket goes up to 20%. So poor Mitt Romney, he's gonna be liable for the 20% tax capital gains rate now. He can afford it, Mr. Singh. I agree with that. Yeah. He has to pay his fair share of the taxes. So for people who are in the ordinary tax brackets who, have, who are making less than $400,000, they will not see any increase in their capital gains tax rates either. Okay. So that's a very well explained. Well, thank you very much for explaining that. I want to talk a little bit about the, there was a rule that the debt forgiveness would not be treated as income for people who lost their primary house. Is it still true? It is still true. Uh, after the real estate uh, crash in 2008 and 2009, uh, banks were foreclosing on the properties. Uh, you had to pick up gain on your income tax rate, uh, on your income tax returns. The foreclosure was a debt forgiveness. Think about it this way. If you owe me money and I'm going to say, okay, I'll let you go, I'm going to take a tax write-off. So the balancing act is somebody has to pick up the uh, income to pay the taxes to the U.S. government. So in this situation, uh, the government said, okay, uh, we understand you guys are in a hardship. IRS recognizes that as well. So therefore, up to $2 million of debt forgiveness on the losses on the uh, primary residence, not the sale and exchange, but because of debt for, uh, forgiveness arising out of the loan modification, foreclosures, you have no income to pick up on your personal income Is there any limit to this, uh, how much money you can deduct? Two million dollars. Two million dollars. Up to two million dollars. Up to two million dollars. Okay. The, uh, the debt forgiveness uh, per se. Okay. Well, that's great. Uh, a lot of uh, people in the audience would be interested to know about the, any changes in the education expense field because they got the kids going to the school. The a, lot of a lot of kids, uh, <laughs> pres uh, including mine, sir. Uh, president Obama is a pro-education yes, pre uh, president. Yes, he is indeed. He has initiated a lot of uh, educational benefits, and he has retained whatever was initiated by President Clinton, what has uh, been instituted by President Bush. All those tax credits and education deductions are still there. Uh, it, they have been extended. extended. Teachers, for example, if they were spending $250, are less, uh, they were allowed to write off $250 on their tax returns, even if they were not atomizing, that stays in place. Education credit, which is the American Opportunity Tax Credit for students who are going to college and the parents are paying for the tuition, they are able to claim that up to $2,500 of tax credit. Out of that $2,500, $1,000 is a tax refundable. If your income tax becomes less, uh, becomes zero, you still are eligible to get $1,000 credit as money refunded to you. Uh, and of course, there are some income level limits for people who are making $400,000 or $450,000, they don't need it. It's middle class American, uh, low spectrum p uh, education, uh, people in the low sp spectrum of the br uh, bracket, they need those credits so it is available for them. If you do not qualify for the education tax credit, then you have that um, $4,000 as education expense deduction from your income. And these credits and deductions, even if you don't itemize, is available. Hmm. The third one is that student loans for education, believe it or not, it, this was going to be scratched off if uh, the rule would not have passed in January. The education uh, interest of $2,500 is still a deduction from okay. the tax uh, from your income, 
uh, again, there is uh, income thresholds uh, uh, for that. So that was extended just for one year, am I correct? Uh, this is uh, going up to, to 2013 at 2003, the moment. Okay. Then, of course, for graduate studies, uh, if you have uh, a good company that you're working for, uh, they are paying for $5,250 for education assistance for graduate studies. Okay, so, so the employer is paying for the, for the educations. Correct, and they have to go offer it to every employee in the business. Right. And that 5250 is not income to the recipient. It's not income to the student. So if you are working for a good company and they're offering it, take advantage of it. Because uh, it's tax-free. It's tax-free money. Well, here you know the audience, so you got to take advantage of that. Very well said. I, so when, when that got enacted, uh, this legislation, the one you're talking this about? This has been on the books for a long time, but it, got, it did get extended. Okay. And there's another one, a couple of other things. Sure. Uh, and that is the education awards received under National Health Services Corps, or Armed Forces Health Professionals that were conditional have been extended and made permanent in the law. For example, if you have uh, one of these awards and you go and work as a physician in, or as a dentist in a rural area where they need these kind of services, the income that you received at that place is tax-free. Wow. So it must be designated rural areas. De designated areas and it is, it is defined by the code. Okay. Well, that's a that's a pretty good uh, pretty good deal. Absolutely, I, I know a dentist who got the benefit of it. <laughs> we should all take advantage of that. Let's talk a little about the you talk individual income tax. Are there any changes to the business tax? Absolutely, there's definitely changes in the business tax, and uh, the most important ones are those section one seventy nine. Uh, tell me a little bit about one seventy nine. Uh, in the past, the rule was uh, computer software, for example, you have to write it off over three year period. Even though uh, uh, I, as an accountant, use QuickBooks software, which has the basis to continue every year. However, there's some payroll systems that are involved there, tax rates are involved there. They are not applicable in the next year. But we can still continue to use it. And uh, continue to use the, the one software. OK. And therefore, the IRS required that it be written off over three year period. OK. Under the new rules and regulation for this year, we are allowed to write it off in the first year itself, in the year of acquisition. Similarly, I'm sure you have heard about the automobiles. I have been talking about it a lot about those things. If the vehicle that you buy is a luxury vehicle, more than 6,000 pounds in weight, you're allowed to write off $25,000 in the year of acquisition. If, but that, if it is utilized, used for the business purpose rather than, rather than for your own personal purpose? A very good question and very good point. It has to be used more than 50% in business. And the example is, if you're using it 80% for business, you deduct, you are allowed to take the deduction of 80% of the 25,000, so that means $20,000. So what about if you lease the car? If you're leasing the car, you have a 100% tax write-off. However, there are certain benefits of the leasing it and therefore to bring it e at par for people who are buying it, you have to pick up a certain income on your W-2 or on your tax return, and it's called lease inclusion amounts, and they are uh, calculated by the uh, IRS, and it's provided in the tables. And that goes based on the value of the vehicle. The higher the val value, like, let's, let's say $100,000 Mercedes-Benz, you will pick up uh, about $4,000 uh, in income on your tax return, which is in that W two. Uh, uh, so, is it based on certain type of percentage? You said four thousand. Yes, it is based on certain percentages, and it's been computed on the table. I have not gone into the detail of how, trying to figure it out. I rely on the tables. Well, I, I think that's the right thing to do. That's what the, that's what the table is for. Too many numbers to remember in my head. Yeah, that's and I right. Got a small head. Yeah, we all. Uh, we, I, I share with you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the. Uh, the other business expense taxes, for example, if you take people out for lunch. If you take uh, people out for lunch, you, you are allowed to write off the meals and entertainment expenses. However, you have to meet five conditions on it. And what are those? Uh, where, when, how, what. What means what business was discussed. What business was discussed. And what, uh, the place of uh, location. 
So in my practice, I usually advise my clients to use a credit card. Three items are already included in there. And the fourth one is the what business was discussed. You need to just make a note on the credit card statement that comes in that I went to out uh, for lunch after recording with Sa uh, Frank Islam and I had to pay for the lunch for inviting me over to his uh, program. You're on, Mr. Singh. <laughs> Let's talk a little about the uh, tax write-up in terms of you buy the, the furniture, you buy the capital. How, what's the tax write-up on that one is? Uh, if the profit, uh, business is profitable and you have uh, income after taking regular depreciation, you have the opportunity to claim and how long the depreciation is uh, starts before your five years? Furniture is seven years technically. Well, furniture is seven years. So, if you spend something about a uh, hundred thousand dollars, uh, seven thousand dollars, so that means uh, on a simple method you're getting a one thousand dollar write off. If the company has eight thousand dollar profit, I would just write off the whole seven thousand dollars under section one seventy nine. Okay. If if a uh, uh, you have to choose certain type of deductions that people do not properly use it to take the deduction. What would you tell the audience? Some of the hidden one that we do not know much about it. Uh, and, that's the and then also, if you have an office in your home, can you, take, can you write it off that too? So tell us a little bit to the audience. Uh, Mr. Islam, it seems like you've been reading a little too much on tax laws. Well, I, I'm not a tax attorney, but I do pay a lot of taxes. I, I understand that. The reason I've mentioned that sentence is just two days ago. Yeah, that's what I heard. That's what the person two said. Two days ago, the IRS came out with a regulation yeah. and saying simplified rules for office at home deduction. Yeah. You're allowed to claim $5 per square foot, th sorry, $5 per square foot, a maximum of 300 square feet in your Here office. Here you go, the audience. $1,500 without questions asked. Without question asked. Without questions asked. Well, that's a good deduction for the people who utilize their home for the office. It's a simple, Very simple. and straightforward purpose. However, it's effective January 1st, 2013 onwards, not for 2012. Okay, so, so the clock starts now. Clock starts in this year. Okay, okay, well, uh, I understand that. And, and what are the uh, other taxes that the people sort of ignore and do not know much about a deduction that the business needs to know? Well, w one of the most important thing is the, the social security tax. Okay. Even though it is a, a employment related tax, but it is still a tax because it's money going out of our pocket. In the past two years, we have had a ho tax holiday. The employee part. You're talking a payroll tax holiday. Payroll tax. Yeah. The employee part was, uh, yeah. uh, was 4.2 percent. Yes, yes. Instead of the regular 6.2 percent. The employer still has the 6.2 percent. Right. However, with that was the Medicare tax, which is 1.45 percent. So, an individual who's making up to 113,700 on wages in a W-2 has to pay Medicare tax at the rate of 1.45 percent. Up to 200,000 for singles, their Medicare tax still remains in effect. Going forward, more than two hundred thousand dollars, there is a surcharge on Medicaid tax, and that's 0.9 percent. Is that because of the Affordable Care Act? It is uh, because of the Affordable Take Care Act. Yes. So, if you make more than that, how much you pay? 2.35 percent, and it it is a hit on the people who are making good money. Well, we, make, we should be paying our fair share if you make good money, right? Yeah, if you make a lot of money. Uh, yes. Uh, my best friend, Mitt Romney, avoided it because he didn't have earned income. It is on wages. It is on self-employment income. It is not on uh, the, what you call, passive income, which is interest incomes and dividends and all those things. For that, he has, uh, President Obama came up with something else, which is the 3.8%. Uh, you're right. You're right. So, so th that's, that's the addition tax that we have to pay. Right. If, you, if you're rich and resourceful, if you're blessed with some money, now, let's, do you have, uh, can you shed some lights uh, for the AMT? A lot of people are talking about it, a little bit. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll try my best because- And what does AMT stand for? Alternative Minimum yeah. Tax. Very well said. Where did it come from? That was initiated by President Reagan in way back 1982 as a way to raise revenues. It's not raising taxes, it's raising revenues. So, alternative minimum taxes, you take away certain tax preferential deductions. Okay. And it's computed on a parallel way 
on your income tax return. Okay. So every year, it was not uh, pegged to inflation rates. So every year, Congress used to have a battle to pass the patch. Right. The new law that passed uh, on January uh, 2013, it's been made permanent. The, the fix is permanent in the sense it's going to be pegged to the inflation rate going forward. People like me still have to pay the AMT every quarter. So do I, sir. Okay. Br privileges of living in America and not somewhere else. Well, we have to pay our fair share, I'm all, and uh, I'm, I'm all for it. And it is, imp it is important that, uh, that we serve our country in the sense that we pay our taxes. Well, thank you very much for coming, Mr. Singh. We appreciated that, and I'm sure that the audience appreciated uh, your vision and, uh, and some, an insight and experience that you have in this area. And if they want to get hold of you, how do they get hold of you? Uh, Mr. Fr Islam, thank you very much. I've heard a lot about you, and it's a privilege to be here today. Oh, you're most welcome, sir. And uh, anybody who wants to uh, get in touch with us, uh, the practice is at uh, 2841 Heartland Road in Falls Church. Uh, this is our new location. Uh, we moved here in Fe uh, November 2012. And what is your email address to people? Uh, Manny at manjitsingcpa.com. Okay, here you go. Thank you very much for watching this show. This is Frank Islam wishing you a great week.